Hi friends, today we are going to study about some basic instruments used in oral surgery. Let's get started. Now there are so many different kinds of instruments used in a single procedure of an oral surgery. Some are used for incising or cutting the tissues, others aid in elevating the mucoperiosteum. Then comes the instruments used specifically for the extraction process like elevators, forceps, periotomes, etc. Then there are instruments to remove the bone like rongers, burden handpiece, mallet and chisel, bone file. Then last but not the least, there comes the instruments for suturing. Let's talk about the instruments for incising the tissue. The primary instrument for making incisions is called the scalpel, which is composed of a reusable handle and a disposable sterile sharp blade. The most commonly used handle for oral surgery is the number 3 handle and the most commonly used scalpel blade for the intraoral surgery is the number 15 blade. Now the instruments for elevating the mucoperiosteum. When an incision is made through the periosteum, ideally the periosteum should be reflected from the underlying cortical bone in a single layer with periosteal elevator. The instrument that is most commonly used in oral surgery is the number 9 mold periosteal elevator. This instrument has a sharp pointed end and a broader rounder end. The pointed end is used to begin the periosteal reflection and to reflect the dental papilla from between the teeth and the broad rounded end is used to continue the elevation of the periosteum from bone. For soft tissue retraction, a variety of retractors have been specifically designed to retract the cheek, tongue and the mucoperiosteal flap to provide access and visibility during the surgery. Retractors can also help protect the soft tissue from the sharp cutting instruments. The two most popular cheek retractors are right angle Austin retractor and the broad offset Minnesota retractor. Now here in this slide you can see both types of the cheek retractors. In the first picture, there is the right angle Austin retractor and the second picture is of the broad offset Minnesota retractor. Now the instruments for tooth extraction. First, let's talk about the dental elevators. These instruments are used to luxate or to loosen the teeth from the surrounding bone. Loosening teeth before the application of dental forceps makes the extraction easier. In addition to their role in loosening teeth from surrounding bone, Dental elevators are also used to expand the alveolar bone. By expanding the buccocervical plate of bone, the surgeon facilitates the removal of the tooth that has a limited and obstructed path for removal. Finally, the elevators are used to remove the broken or surgically sectioned roots from the sockets. Here in this slide, you can see different kinds of elevators. In the first picture, there are straight elevators. In second picture, you can see the T-elevator with a crossbar handle and in the last picture, you can see the triangular elevators or the criers which actually comes in pairs for left and right side or the mesial and distal root. Now comes the main instrument for the tooth extraction that is the forceps. The extraction forceps are the instruments used for removing the tooth from the alveolar bone Ideally, the forceps are used to lift the elevator luxated teeth from the sockets rather than to pull the teeth from the sockets. Here you can see the forceps for maxillary and mandibular incisors. Forcep number 150 is used for maxillary incisor and the forcep number 151 for mandibular incisors. Here you can see the forcep 150A used for maxillary premolars and the forceps 151A for the mandibular premolars. Here's the pictures of the forceps used for the maxillary molars. The one on the left side is used for the left maxillary molar and the one on the right side is used for the right maxillary molar. Just look closely to the beaks of the forceps. These beaks always fall on the buccal side of the tooth. These are the forceps used for the mandibular molars. The forcep shown in the last picture is called the cow horn forcep due to the resemblance of its beaks with the cow horns. Now comes the instruments for the bone removal. The first ones are the rongers. 
These instruments have sharp plates that are squeezed together by the handles, cutting or pinching through the bone. The two major designs for rancher forceps are a side cutting forcep and a side and end cutting forcep. Purse and handpiece. Now this is the technique that most of the surgeons use when removing the bone for the surgical removal of the teeth. High speed and high torque handpieces with sharp carbide burrs remove the cortical bone efficiently. Burrs such as number 557 or number 703 Fisher burrs and number 8 round burrs are used. Now the mallet and the chisel which are often used for removing the lingual tori. Bone file which is used for the final smoothing of the bone before completing the surgery. The teeth of the bone files are arranged in such a fashion that they remove the bone only on a pull stroke. Pushing this type of bone file against the bone results only in burnishing and crushing the bone and should be avoided. Now let's talk about the instruments used for removing the soft tissue from the bony cavities after the extraction is completed. They are called curettes. The principal use is to remove the granulomas or small cysts from the peripical lesions, but the curette may also be used to remove the small amounts of granulation tissue debris from the tooth socket. For suturing, we use needle holders, sutures and scissors. For intraoral placement of sutures, a 6-inch needle holder is usually recommended. The beaks of a needle holder are shorter and stronger than the beaks of a hemostat. The face of a beak of the needle holder is cross-hatched to permit a positive grasp of suture needle. The hemostat has a parallel grooves on the face of the beaks, thereby decreasing the control over the needle and the suture. Therefore, hemostat is not an instrument used for suturing. Needles used for suturing are usually the small half circle or 3 8 circle suture needle. Here's a tray set for a basic surgical procedure. It consists of a syringe, needle, anesthetic capule, cheek and tongue retractors, periosteal elevators, straight elevators, suture, suture holder and needle, saline and sterile gauze. That's all for today guys. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video and subscribe my channel.